if an animal built these, that is incredible. Look at this. Look at this architecture. I don't know, that kind of looks man-made to me, but who knows? It's Friday, and it's been a little while since I've answered some questions, and there are a few queuing up, so let's just go through them here. Someone asked about the Sting concert I went to. Was Rachel Z on keys? No. It was David Sanctious, who has been playing with Sting for a long time, and I forget the name of the keyboard player that was with Peter Gabriel, but it was not Rachel Z. Joseph asked about yesterday's log about the song I was playing at the end. It wasn't a song, it was just a, a I don't know, three or six note exercise that I made up for myself and then I started improvising around that. Here's an interesting one from Steve. Thoughts on mobile phones at gigs, taking videos. I noticed a lot at the Sting gig. I know Alicia Keys recently banned them. Do we need a record of being there or do they detract from the atmosphere? I think they detract from the atmosphere and obviously I put that in the vlog, but I kind of knew that I was going to do that when I took the footage and to be perfectly honest, the entire sum of all the footage I took over what was more than a three hour concert my video was less than two minutes total. So I just captured a couple little moments just for those purposes. But uh, as far as like taking video of the whole darn thing, that's silly, just enjoy it, just be there. It's not gonna sound as good on the phone or on, you're never gonna, you're never gonna sit there and watch it. At most, have a little short clip to show somebody, but you know, whatever. That's my take. Did you ever get the chance to meet Vinny, as in Vinny Caliuta? No, never met him. Uh, here's one about the vlog from a couple days ago where I mentioned this this line that Mark Turner played on his on this ballads album over Skylark. Um, he asked, uh, 10 player asked, would love to hear your explanation of what you heard in Mark's line. I think it's right after this, right here. Right here. I heard awesome sauce. I don't know. It just, I liked the way that line came off. I liked the color of the harmony. I liked how even the lines were. I just, I liked how long the phrase was. I, I really liked the phrase. This is from uh, Bob Martin. How do you deal with hating the way you sound when you're at a live gig? I wish I had a great answer for this, but my answer is that I suffer through it. I do my best to just hope, pray, trust that whatever the audience is hearing is better than what I'm hearing. I had this actually at a, a show of mine recently, even here in town, and I just, I felt really uninspired by the sound the whole time and it was bugging me, but I just had tried to let it go and it's hard. It's hard, I, tr I try, but I, I fail at that. Zass or XAS asked, where can I find that saxophone exercise book? I think he's referring to from a couple vlogs ago. This, Sigurd Rasher's 158 saxophone exercises. I would assume it's on amazon.com. This is kind of a longer question from uh, episode 66. Uh, same person, XAS, asked, I have a different problem. I sit down to practice for about three to four hours a day and every time I pu try to push myself to practice something like long tones or overtones or scales, I never end up doing it. I always find myself back to playing standards I know and improving for fun. I constantly find myself disappointed in myself for not practicing the correct material. Um, and in retrospect, I'm not really progressing as much as I could. Should I read that book you talked about? I mean, you can read, he's probably talking about The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Sure, read the book, but you gotta get your off your ass and, and do the work. Otherwise, I mean, no amount of book reading will change it for you. And as far as what you're talking about, about not doing that stuff, you're answering your own question right there. For what it's worth, somebody followed up with, I, I think, a really great response. I won't take the time to read it here, but you can visit the comments and check it out. He's just basically talking about, this is something I actually have a lesson or two lessons on in my online teaching site about like learning a melody as long tones, like using a, a ballad melody or something, mel a melody of a song very slow, rather than saying, hey, I'm gonna do long tones, why not also be learning a tune or at least the melody to a tune while you're doing those long tones. But I, I talked about it in that 
vlog, like you, I oscillate between the two, you know, stuff that challenges and inspires me and feels gratifying and stuff that's nitty gritty, like hard work. I do like to put on, I think it's it's good to put on some music that gets you inspired before you even start practicing. And then maybe spend a couple of minutes just getting loose and playing around. And then kind of, I like to start with tone almost always, you know, my theory is that if I don't, if I don't have it like the first note where it sounds to me uh, beautiful and rewarding, then, you know, I'm not really, well, until I get that part right, the rest of the practice section session is probably not gonna be that enjoyable or productive. The last thing I'll say is three or four hours a day. I did that for about a year when I was in like 10th grade, but I don't think uh, any more than two hours a day is really necessary if you're using those two hours correctly.